Not hard to figure out what I'm going to come up with now. 4 times 3? 12. Good. All right, let's go down to example 3. 20 minus 7 times 2 plus 1. 20 minus 7 times 2 plus 1. Of three operations in this problem, subtraction, multiplying, and adding, which one will I do first? Chris? I do the multiplication first. Good. So I have to do 7 times 2 first. And 7 times 2 is going to give me what, Shelly? 14. 14. Good. So I've got 20 minus 14 plus 1. Which operation comes next now? The subtraction or the add? No. Subtraction. Subtraction comes first. Subtraction and adding are in the same step. Okay? Adding and subtracting go together. Okay? They just go left to right. Okay? So the one that's on the left is the one you do first. Subtraction happens to be on the left. Okay. Make sure you look over there. Yes, that is a correct order, but there is some grouping that's not up there. Okay. okay. Look down there. Adding and subtracting are in the same step. All right. All right so I've got to do 20 minus 14 first, which is six. And then I've got six plus one, which is seven. Seven. Example four. Example four is a problem with nested parentheses, and I wanted to make sure I did one with you so you didn't think I was just making it up. You can see example four says 45 divided by parentheses 63 divided by parentheses 56 divided by 8 close parentheses close parentheses. A lot of parentheses. Again, the innermost set of parentheses is what we do first. So in this problem, the innermost set would be this one because they're inside this set out here. So the first thing I have to do in this problem, even though they're all division, is 56 divided by 8. 56 divided by 8 is 7. Good. So I've got 45. Divided by 63 divided by 7. All right. I still have parentheses here. So parentheses are still the thing I'm going to do first. So what am I going to do now? Go ahead. 63 divided by 7, which is 9. Good. So I've got 45 divided by 9. And finish it off and take the glory. 45 divided by 9. Chris? Five. Good. All right. Example five. Five times four over five minus three. When you have a problem that looks like a fraction, like this one is, what I have to make sure you know is that you do the top first, you do the bottom second, and then you take care of the fraction part. I'll say it again. Do the top or the numerator first. Do the bottom or denominator second, then do the fraction part. Now, of course, if you get an answer like 1 over 2, you could just leave it 1 over 2. You could change it to 0.5 the decimal if you wanted to, but why do the extra work? Okay. Okay. Really, the only time you're going to have to do any work would be if it's something came out to be like 100 over 10. Okay. Because you know by now that 100 over 10, just divide the top and the bottom, 100 over 10, 100 divided by 10, you just give you 10. Okay, so top has the ever tricky problem of 5 times 4. 5 times 4 is going to give me what? Christian? What? 5 times 4? 20. 20. And on the bottom, we have an ever more difficult problem of 5 minus 3. 4. Or two. <laughs> 2. 5 minus 3 is 2. All right. 
So I've got 20 over 2 here, and 20 over 2 is going to divide to give... Yeah, you. 10. 10. Thank you. There you go. All right. Let's go on to the last part, which covers a verbal model. Verbal model using symbols for operations and words to label necessary information. Using symbols for operations and words to label necessary information. In a verbal model, you're not actually going to solve anything. Even if you could, you're not going to. In a verbal model, all you're doing is writing out words the way you're going to solve the problem. Again, a verbal model using symbols for operations and words to label necessary information. Let's take a look at example six. Write a verbal model to express the cost of going to the movies for two, buying one jumbo popcorn, and three medium drinks. All right, so let's go ahead and write this expression. First thing we obviously have in this problem is going to the movies for two. So I have to buy tickets, obviously. What am I going to multiply tickets by? Two. Two, right. I buy two tickets, so I'm going to multiply it by two. Then in a verbal model, you just keep adding on the extra parts. So the next thing we run across is buying one jumbo popcorn. So I write jumbo popcorn. <coughs> and I'm multiplying jumbo popcorn by what in this problem? One. Okay, I'm only bought one, so I only need to multiply by one. Now, you're probably, some of you are probably asking yourself, why do I need to multiply by 1? When you write a verbal model, you want to write it so that if I change the numbers, that's the only thing you have to do is change the numbers. You don't have to go back in and add in times, numbers now. Okay. That's the way you write a verbal model. So that's why we write in the times one. All right, and what's the last part going to be here? Medium drinks times three. And this is close to being finished. The only thing you need to add in would be an equals, because it's all got to add up to something. And you want to say it equals the total cost. That's a verbal model.